Tom, are you going to do this review or am I? For Raw? Yeah. Well, this is your show, buddy. So you didn't take notes today? You didn't take Oh, I have full notes, but we don't have the time for that. (laughs) You can't get it done in 12 minutes? Absolutely not. Wow. You want to try? All right. Hey, Jimmy Smith, nowhere to be found as this show is coming to us from San Diego, California. And we have Kevin Patrick taking his place at the helm of Raw. Is is Jimmy Smith out? They said he was on vacation. Ah, okay. Good for him. As you mentioned, true. Who takes a vacation on Monday, the 4th of July? 4th of July. Ridiculous. So Lashley comes out, as you mentioned, the the most over guy on the show. There's big chance of Bobby, Bobby, Bobby. And he says very little before Theory comes out. Says he's got a rematch taking place against Lashley at SummerSlam. And uh, basically jumps Lashley. Doesn't get very far. Lashley catches the briefcase, spine busters Theory, and we move on. Yeah, they are playing it up that Theory has vowed that he's going to cash in after that uh, last man standing match, and he will become the new champion. Man, if I wasn't getting ready to order SummerSlam before, that is going to certainly get me to spend my four ninety five to see that show. Let me tell you. But yes, Lashley's super over. We had your boys, the Mysterios, taking on the Judgment Day here in their hometown of San Diego. Rey Mysterio said he's going to teach the Judgment Day to respect the 619. And uh, I'm not quite sure if he did that because the Judgment Day beat the crap out of both Dominic and Rey through multiple commercial breaks until Damian Priest tried to cheat. He threw Finn Balor a chair. Rey Mysterio took a bump, pretended to get hit. It was the old Eddie Guerrero Fake DQ win, and this homage to Eddie got over huge with the crowd. These damn cheating Guerreros, we talked about this multiple times. They're such slimy heels. But in fact, because it was San Diego, because it was an homage, an homage, Marseille, to uh, Rey Mysterio, it did get over huge. It was like the most, this was probably the most... Over, I have seen a disqualification in WWE probably since about uh, 2005. So uh, they made it work, and uh, no no turn by a young Dominic. That's uh, probably still coming. Not even a hint. No. He was happy to celebrate this win. But you know they do that sometimes where if they're about to do something... They, they want to really make you think they're not going to do it. So, like, a lot of times you'll see, you know, someone promising a cash-in, and then they just won't. Whereas on Money in the Bank, Liv did the big interview, and she goes, I'm thinking WrestleMania is the time. I don't want to screw this up. I'm, I'm just going to take some time, and I'm just going to enjoy my win. And she was so good that I believed that she wasn't going to cash in. And then, of course, it was to set up her cashing in. So I think they dropped the Ms. Ray stuff because they want to surprise you. When it happens, would be my guess. I could be wrong. Miz, huh? Well, we had Miz up next yeah, as Miz. he took it on AJ Styles. Whatever before before that, they played video of Logan Paul signing with the WWE and vowing to kick the Miz's butt talks at SummerSlam. Uh, and then the Miz took on AJ Styles. Ciampa interfered. He attacked Styles, appeared to align himself with the Miz, and uh, they left. Dude, this was a AJ nothing match. AJ Styles laying. AJ, AJ beats him with a phenomenal forearm. It was a six minute match. It was not anything special at all. All this talk about Logan Paul and Miz. They've got a big match at, at SummerSlam. Let's not protect the Miz at all. Let's just pin him in the middle of the ring. I was like, man, whatever, who cares? It doesn't matter, but it, this this booking baffled me. It's like, why did you do this match? Why, why not let Miz beat somebody? Isn't that the point of like trying to build a guy up for a match against Logan Paul? I don't know. What happened to the local competitors they were using for a while? That well, seems to have I stopped get, a little bit I guess bit they had well, no huh? local pet competitors here tonight. In San Diego? Yeah. Southern California's they got all, no wrestlers? They all signed with AEW. There's none oh, left. Is Liv Morgan... Came out. Are they going to uh, get she, Danny Limelight? Wow. 
Well, I still haven't gotten over when he's spinning the guy's face and had a shillelagh. <laughs> Not the most intelligent maneuver. No. But, hey, very on character, on brand for him. Uh, Bianca Belair and Liv Morgan took on Natalia and Carmella. This was set up by a Liv Morgan promo. She said she relied on the WWE Universe to lift her up when she was down and even that she was giving them nothing to cheer for. As the new SmackDown Women's Champion, of course, she needs a challenger. This is Natalia who comes out and tries to take credit for softening up Ronda in the prior match, which, I mean, it's a true statement. Uh, she wants to face Liv. Carmella comes out. She wants them to leave because it's Raw, and she wants to uh, basically run the show here as these two SmackDown competitors are holding court. The... Heels end up beating up Liv. Bianca Belair made the save. Adam Pierce made it a match. And we had the Raw and SmackDown Women's Champions teaming up tonight. That lived it great night. in this uh in this segment. She's uh she has in fact been underutilized for a long time. And the fans do recognize that. And uh I think this could end up being one of those edge things where he won and cashed in Money in the Bank, and it was only supposed to be like a three-week thing. But he got so over that he ended up being a permanent main eventer. So we'll see if that happens with Liv. But I thought she did a good job here. And let me say something one thing about Carmella really quick. When she did that promo, and she goes, I can't believe, Natty, that you're not just going to slap Liv Morgan the way I slapped Bianca Belair last night. It really hit me that... Carmella's not, like, a great worker at all, even though Ed in San Antonio sent me a text about how improved she was after that match in Money in the Bank, and I was like, of all matches, that's the one you chose? But she's a good heel because she she delivers these heel lines in such a way that I'm like, dude, I want to see someone just, like, pin you in the middle of the ring and humiliate you. Not like the go-away type of heat, but the actual right kind of heat, where the heel says something, you're like, ah, I want to see her get hers. When she had that line about how she slapped around Bianca the night before, even though it was like a total Bianca dominant one, two, three pin in the middle of the ring, and it actually was like, how can you say that she beat you? And then I realized, what a mark you are, Brian. She gotcha. So anyway, I think Carmella's a good heel. She delivers her heel lines well. But as far as in the ring... No, Ed. She's she's there at this point. Natty went for the sharpshooter. Liv kicked her under the ropes, hit the oblivion, and picked up the win. So, way to heat up Natty. I don't think for... they're trying to heat up Natty. They mentioned after this match, like, she was still going to be the challenger. Well, they do this stuff all the time. I mean, Carmella's still a challenger. She got beat in the middle of the ring in, like, six minutes last night or Sunday. Or Saturday. Or whatever day it is today. And then. Anyway, they had a food contest. Ugh. Nobody got choked out. Tom I can't do I, it. I wish I, I'm not covering that. Yeah, they had a they had a, uh, a hot dog eating contest. And Otis lost. But he came in second. Because Tozawa ate all the hot dogs. And then this led to a match later on. Where, yes, he uh, he barfed. Yeah. Appalling. It was hideous. Why? Why is this on my television? Because Vince thinks it's funny when people barf or... It's not. Well, I know that. You Wait, know hold that. on. He doesn't like any sneezing? You can't sneeze, but you can barf? Well, he doesn't want you barfing in his office, but like... <laughs> Why do you know? You know? He likes to see stupid stuff on TV. You know? Big Out guy eats hot things, dogs, barfs. What could be funnier than that? Besides virtually maximum male anything, models. Ugh. Seth Rollins and Zeke, I thought, had a good match. Am I wrong? Yeah, it was good. Yeah. It was good. Rollins at the stomp picked up the win. Riddle snuck up, RKO'd him out of nowhere. Uh, this was set up because at the barbecue party, whatever it was, earlier today, there was a bunch of pandemonium, and Ezekiel squirted ketchup on Rollins' shirt. Ugh. You know, uh, when Ezekiel first showed up and... I was like, man, Elias, he played the guitar. People loved the concert. Wasn't a very good wrestler, but, like, the rest of the stuff was good. Now they've stripped all of that away, and he's just in there as a generic wrestler. I was like, how could this possibly get over? But you know what? Zeke is way, <laughs> way better 
than Elias ever was. And he's improved a lot in the ring of late. Granted, he was in with Seth. But this Zeke, I don't even know how he managed, but he turned his career around by getting rid of everything that was over and somehow becoming more over as just a guy. A guy's brother. It's impressive. Are we gonna are we gonna get Elrod? I think we are. Is Elrod They're strongly coming? hinting because... that we're gonna see Elrod? <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Uh Megan Moran. Well, we had Chad Gable and Otis and uh Theory took on Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits, like you mentioned. Uh Lashley pinned Gable after a spear, and then we had Otis barfing. Only twenty three hot dogs he ate. Yeah, and and somehow he only barfed one. That was weird. <laughs> well, I mean, he's not quite the worker that our boy Joey Chestnut is, is he? Joey Chestnut, 63 dogs, hit the zigzag on a protester, Yeah, took him out in the process. None of that happened here, let me tell no. you. Otis. I Otis like this Megan gamer. Morant, by the way, when the first thing she says is, I hope Otis is feeling better soon. <laughs> now let's talk to Becky Lynch. And Becky doesn't care at all about old Otis. She's just angry. No. She's going to have a match with... Uh... Then we had my favorite segment of the show. I got to tackle this one. Our truth comes out dressed as Uncle Sam. And after everything that's been going on in our country over the last couple of months, man, he's begging these fans to chant USA. And, dude, I'm watching these 1993 Raws with the Lex Express Tour where the people actually are going crazy with USA chants. Man, they don't want to chant USA in 2022. He's begging for chants. It's not working. Finally, out comes Ludwig Kaiser and Gunther. And uh, the ref goes, you ready, Truth? Truth goes, no. He goes, you ready? No, I don't want this match. All right, ring the bell. It's like, what a horrible horrible person that referee is and uh, he's immediately killed absolutely brutalized by gunther destroyed in his wig and uh, that was the end of that man what a horrible guy and then main event becky lynch beat oscar in the no holds barred match i thought the first half before the commercial not good second half good what did you think uh, they went right into the weapons you know what I mean? Like, they started using trash cans and chairs immediately. This was billed as a no-holds-barred match, Brian, but I didn't see Zeus anywhere. You're an idiot. You know why they had to rush is because they could have started wrestling at 10.40 p.m., but they had seven minutes of commercials, entrances, and video packages, and then they ended up rushed. Just like we are, because I hear the music. I made a whole segment without getting in trouble. This is how the show begins, really. Oscar does a back kick, camera cut. She does a back fist, camera cut. She starts to run, camera cut. She gets a hip attack, camera cut. She drops to her knees, camera cut. She throws a kick, camera cut. She stands up and screams, camera cut to people brawling on the floor. I was furious, you understand? I wanted to shut the show off and not watch anymore. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.